with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, Behold, magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. He said, they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler." who is to shepherd my people. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold... The star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, all the nations shall adore you. A small but on fire group of missionaries decided they wanted to go someplace where they had never heard the name of Jesus before. So they went to a small little village far from their home that was on a river. And there they began to live with the people, to work with them, to build relationships with them, and then to share with them their encounter with Christ. Many people came, even were baptized. And the missionaries kind of dug their roots in and decided, well, let's stay here and teach them some more. And they built buildings and kind of worked with the people that they already knew and the people who had already come to them. But it was a smaller group of those original missionaries that still had that fire in them to go out. So they decided to leave that village and go down the river until they found another village. And it took a long time, but they finally found one where they had never heard the name of Jesus. And they began to get to know the people, to live with them, to work with them, to share with them their own encounter with Christ. And again, again, many came to believe and were baptized. But like the others, they too 
started to say, well, let's settle in and we'll work with these people. And, you know, that sense of going out turned in. And there were a small group of the original missionaries, very, very small at this point, that still felt that need to go out. And so they went down the river until they themselves found somewhere else far away another place where they had not yet heard the name of Jesus, where they were not on fire for the Lord, so that they could bring the light of Christ to them. Lord, all the nations will adore you. All the nations will adore you. In our baptism, we are sons and daughters of the Father, temples of the Holy Spirit, and missionary disciples of Jesus Christ. At our baptism, after receiving the Holy Spirit through the, through the waters, the invocation of the Trinity, our ears were blessed, our mouth was blessed. Our ears were blessed because as his disciples in our baptism, we are called to sit at the feet of the Master and listen to him, receive from him, be filled with him, become like him. But our lips are also blessed because as his missionaries, having been fueled with him, he sends us out to share with others all we have encountered in him. This is our baptismal calling. This is what it means to be a member of the church. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI, whom we pray rests in the peace of Christ, taught that the whole of the Second Vatican Council was truly stirred by the longing to proclaim Christ, the light of the world, to contemporary humanity in the heart of the church. From the summit of her hierarchy emerged the impelling desire awakened by the Spirit for a new epiphany of Christ in the world. A world that the modern epoch had profoundly transformed and that for the first time in history found itself facing the challenge of a global civilization in which the center could no longer be Europe or even what we would call the West and the North of the world. A new epiphany, a new epiphany, bringing Christ and the light to the nations. Jesus Christ is the good news. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the times in which we live call for us to proclaim him as light to the nations in a way different than any of those that came before us for centuries. For not only are we dealing with people who don't know the name of Christ or who know the name but live as if he didn't exist, we're dealing with people with a culture around the world in many places that has no sense of the spiritual. No sense of the spiritual. They see only what you can touch. That's very different. Very, very different. And yet, Christ must be proclaimed. In our baptism, we are propelled to proclaim him in the midst of the world. We have been placed in this time, in this generation, in this situation, to proclaim Christ as a light to the nations. 
like the missionaries in the story, it's easy for us to turn in or to circle the wagons against this big bad world. But our baptism calls us always to go out to bring Christ to the nations, to be vehicles of a new epiphany. At Christmas, we celebrate Christ's birth, his coming to his own people. But at the epiphany, we celebrate his becoming known and bringing himself to all people, represented by the Magi. This sense of going out from our comfort zone to bring Christ to others. This requires of us an ardor of apostolic times. Because like the apostles, we live in a time when culture and society, even the structures of society, are trying to stop us from evangelizing. Stop us from bringing Christ, the light, to all to all the nations. Now, to do this, to be a missionary disciple, we don't have to go to some far-off place. Far from home. We don't have to do that. Once we go out these doors, we are in mission territory. We are in mission territory. I think I've shared with you before, if I walked down the street of a small southern town in the 1950s where they thought Catholics had horns, and I was wearing my priest garb, my clerics, even though they th would think I probably had horns, they'd pass by me and go, good morning, Father. And they would know who I was. They would know that. Not today. Gee, that's an interesting outfit. Who's the designer? Sometimes in, I'll, let's say I'm giving somebody a penance of, say the Our Father, and I think to myself, oh gosh, I hope they know the Our Father. And a lot of people don't. They don't. We're living in a very different world. And right out those doors is mission territory. We come here as disciples to be filled by him. And from here, through those doors, he sends us out on mission. How do we do that in our daily lives? How do we do that? Not going all over the place and around the world. Let me give you four simple words. Witness. Friendship. Proposal. Witness, that's four, right? Witness, friendship, proposal, witness. If we have encountered Jesus Christ, if we are on fire for him, without saying a word, we live that and can be seen as different in the midst of the world in our family, in the workplace, in school, in the grocery line at Publix. People notice something in us different from the world around us and them. And they see a light, and it attracts them. Pope Paul VI said it. He said, the first step of evangelization is living the faith. It's a quiet evangelization where people begin to see in the Christian community, in the person who has encountered Christ, things that stir questions in their hearts. Why are they here? Why are they the way they are? What does he have that I don't have? Witness. Friendship. M the most successful of missionaries in parts of the world, other parts of the world, throughout the history of the church, would always start with getting to know people, understanding their culture, knowing their language. They didn't come in with a bat to beat them over the head with Christ. 
they began to develop relationships. If they come to a village and the village doesn't have water, the first thing they're going to do is try and figure out how to get water to the village and teach the people how to do that and build relationship. Friendship. Witness. Friendship. Then perhaps, perhaps in the trust and mutual respect of relationship, the other might ask, what do you have that I don't? And then you can propose Jesus. We never impose him. We propose him in the midst of that friendship, that relationship. Ah, let me tell you about my encounter with Jesus Christ. And then if by the call of the Holy Spirit and that person's response, he or she comes to an encounter with Christ himself or herself, then you have another witness again, added to the church one soul at a time. That's the going out. That's the going out. Going out into St. Petersburg. Living Christ, witnessing to my encounter with him, creating relationships of trust, where perhaps I will have the opportunity opened by the Holy Spirit to propose Jesus Christ, to share with someone in that trusting relationship about my encounter with Christ, what it has meant for me, what it has done for me, all I have found in him that makes my life beautiful and good. And then perhaps that person may be led by the Spirit to encounter Christ as well and be on fire for him as well and go out as a witness into the world and start the whole process over again. There are many who don't know the name of Jesus anymore. There are those who have forgotten it. There are those who know it but don't want to be bothered with it. There are those who know it but aren't on fire for it. Aren't on fire for it. Chesterton once said, sitting in a pew does not make you a Christian any more than sitting in your garage makes you a car. We have to be on fire today for the Lord so that we can go out of our own comfort zones and share our encounter with him in the midst of the world. He who is light of the world so that was said in, in the psalm continues to be true. Lord, all the nations shall praise you.